Well, I, I know for you, because you're, you're here in, you're here in the United States doing a lot of your work. Um, so in the day to day, trying to have these conversations, do you feel like anyone is listening or do you feel like it's just, I mean, it must be hard to do the work of diplomacy in this kind of environment is what I'm trying to say. I mean, what can you describe well, that, what your, what your technique is or, or how you're trying to push through that so you can do your job? which is to try to, you know, bridge communication and be listened to, but also, you know, try to figure it out. Well, let's distinguish between open official meetings uh, in front of the cameras and mm -hmm. uh, something that we have informal and cool hours mm -hmm. where we maintain contacts and where people, even from Western countries, they totally understand what's happening. Okay. Again, they prefer to stay comfortably numb for certain reasons, but they don't uh, sell us uh, crazy things like uh, that we are allegedly shelling the Zaporozhye nuclear power plant where we right. are stash stationed. So they don't do in the cool hours. Uh, or that, or like that you, or that you sabotage your own pipeline, the Nord yeah, Stream pipeline. Absolutely, yeah, we are yeah. we are such yeah. crazy people that mm -hmm. we are doing all these things yeah. against ourselves, and right. uh, we do not switch our brains on. So they they do not sell it to us mm -hmm. in the cool hours. They would rather ask us questions. So how do we finish it? Uh, what do you think should be done? So it's normal conversation. Of course, they will not repeat it in the in the spotlight. Uh, and uh, there is also one, one, one more dimension, which is very important for me. Okay. It's the perception of, uh, of people with whom I, with, with common people in, in America, mm -hmm. people in the street, uh, especially not in New York, but uh, somewhere else where mm -hmm. I'll try to travel. Because when people learn that I'm Russian, for example, I don't, yes. I don't feel animosity. I don't feel any, 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 any threat. They are curious. Uh, they are mm -hmm. just trying to find out what, what, really ha what is really happening. I can't say that uh, many of them ha have deep knowledge of, uh, mm -hmm. of, the, of history and uh, of uh, what, what is happening. But I don't claim that in Russia, people are very well educated in, on matters of U United States history. So... This is understandable, but I feel this, uh, this interest. And I also, uh, I'm also aware of the fact that we are now living at, uh, at the moment when there is a new Iron Curtain, uh, information Iron Curtain, which is being imposed by the West. You started, uh, you, you, you touched upon this topic with the RT. By the way, RT is surviving. RT is still very much very popular and people are watching mm -hmm. it through internet. I myself yeah. today gave an interview to RT earlier today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And people just don't have the sources where to get the information. It resembles me of the time. Uh, I still remember times of the Soviet Union. I was very young at that moment, but uh, mm -hmm. I still was a teenager. Mm -hmm. I remember we, do, we didn't have alternative sources of information. We didn't have internet. We had to believe everything that the press was publishing. Now, yeah. of course, you have a lot of information in abundance. It's flooding you. But... It doesn't help you to get the picture of the events because it's not only flooding you, it's also brainwashing you. Yeah. And mm -hmm. there is a perception, the official perception, the right perception of the events that is being imposed on you. And you have to, to stick within this uh, right perception of things. Otherwise, you will feel kind of a person from the fringes. I don't know. So uh, that's why. For people here, uh, I can imagine how difficult it is, to, is for them to get uh, sources of alternative information. And they have to consume everything that uh, mass media is, is really presenting them. And this is damaging. I stopped watching uh, US, uh, UK, um, mm -hmm. European sources of information since February because this is really brain damaging. Mm -hmm. And I, I really uh, try to read something, but not to watch something uh, on right. TV. I, I stopped watching uh, TV yeah. programs uh, since, since then. And this is very deplorable because mm -hmm. uh, everything that is alternative, everything that presents the point of view that is not very comfortable for somebody is labeled Russian propaganda. It's right, yes. labeled something that Kremlin is promoting. So when we are speaking in Security Council and our Western ex-partners don't like it, they are saying that Russia is promoting, spreading disinformation there, even if we are speaking about facts. This is already kind of a pattern of reaction to what we are saying. And this is a very, very, I would say, poisonous pattern. This is very bad for the society, because if you limit yourself to kind of right information, then at some point of time, you will just uh, find yourself in a position when you will have no information at all. Absolutely. Absolutely. As you know, um, I'm 
an independent content creator myself and our voices are very much being silenced. Some of us are getting um, banned from a pay, pay apps like PayPal, Venmo. That's one way because being independent, that's how you basically get your income. So many journalists that are independent do not. Um, Wyatt Reed is an American journalist. He was put on the Ukrainian kill list. Um, two weeks ago, he was almost killed. He on WhatsApp had given his location. An hour later, the hotel was bombed. He was targeted. Yeah, he missed it by 30 seconds. Yeah. The, the, the Western media has not even covered it. I mean, I covered it. I talked with him on our show, but yeah. 